He's Jamie Hunt. He's Pat Heath. And we're here at ESP European Base in Berlin. And we're going to talk to you today about Metalcore Giants Parkway Drive. Having dug into this band and listened to their albums over the years and, and, and kind of investigated in, ahead of this, we, we noticed a few things that they do in particular and anything that stood out for you. First of all was the tuning, they like the drop tuning. Yeah, they do. So this <laughs> drop B tuning, mm -hmm. which we've got here. What notes would that be on the string? Well, you basically got to alter your guitar. This is a fixed bridge guitar, so it's very easy to tune down. And basically what we've got here is a B, okay? We've got an F sharp. Another B, we've got an E, a G sharp, and then a C sharp note. Okay, right. So that's like, it's if, you, if you're in standard tuning currently, you tune that to drop D and then take all the strings down three semitones, yeah. right? Or that's quite there. hard if you've got a tremolo. Mm. Um, but if you've got a fixed bridge guitar, you can set a tremolo up to do it and you need yeah. a heavier gauge of string. Heavy gauge strings are yeah. very important for this. Yeah. To get that intonation and feel just right. Yeah, but if you, you if you if you've got a trem, get your guitar set up professionally to do that. That's a good idea. Um, so th this tuning is is obviously what happens is your your uh, your power chords change from this shape to this shape. very cool for getting around sure. and, and what we did with this is we created some parts which were based on on this second fret mm. but with some melodic interjection one thing you get a lot with parkway drivers is the chug is always there but they're very cool at bringing in melodic uh, single note motifs and hooks alongside and around those low chuggy mm. chords. Yeah. So one thing about this tune, having those low power chords on the bottom strings with one finger is then easy to break into these little single note melodic sequences yeah. against it. Um, and what you'll notice with this phrase, you hear that chord <laughs> go into those melody notes, so fifth fret, to fourth fret on the fifth string, back to the chord, then it goes to same with melody but down a fret. So it sounds dissonant in between the notes there, a bit of tension, and then back to the chord. And then down one more fret with those melody notes. So you get this kind of go to notes that fit the key, yeah. repeat, go to notes that are in between and bring tension and yeah. make things feel a little bit uneasy and unrested, then back to notes that are in the key. So if you put those out notes right in the middle of those sequence, so in notes, out notes, in notes, your ears get it, yeah. it makes sense. That's a really good way of using some of those other notes that don't belong to the key, but having that kind of buffer zone of making it make sense. Yeah, very, yeah. very parkway, yeah. yeah. So we wrote two particular sections and we wanted a transition riff, mm. right? So again, you going that theme of using a note that's not quite, not, not correct, but not used before and is a little bit jarring, um, we use this. <laughs> Down one more to that yeah, first fret to the first fret because it was not in. And then we went up to the fifth fret and the, and the seventh fret. And then, and then 
across the drop down to that yeah. first fret is just heavy. It's jarring, but yeah. it feels like the song's going somewhere. That's right. It feels like unsettled again. Yeah. yeah, so we got the rhythm. That brought us to the next section. Yeah, yeah. so that kind of does that little kind of taking you away from the main riff, moving on, yeah. and then we settle into the next section, which kind of feels a bit like a chorus, and we put the melodic kind of lead solo bits on it later on as well. So the chorus section, um, again, it's based around power chords, isn't it? So yeah, you look yeah, at the yeah. power chord bit, because that, that kind of keeping that idea of um, guitars doing different things and having that kind of chunky riff and melody at the same time, you've got a power chord part, and then I've got a very different part, which is the sort of thing um, that Jeff Ling would be playing. So talk us through your part. Yeah, okay, so um, it's based around the fourth fret on the low string, the second fret, and then moving across to what effectively is the A string. We'll refer to that to it. For, no, like, it's like using a regular power chord shape. Yeah, it's a string, regular yeah. power chord shape yeah. now we're there because we're not drop tuned. So. And then fifth fret, and with a, a picking pack. And that's the chord progression, which has more melody because it, it does belong to a particular key. Yeah, I feel like so, it cycles around, yeah? Yeah, it cycles around. Um, and then at the end, we put this kind of little turnaround riff, um, which was used to end the section. So you put yeah. that all together. So that's the chunky power chord uh, approach to that section. The scale that I'm going to use, because of the tuning that we're in, um, I'm starting at the 11th fret, and we get the sound of a D sharp minor scale. So to make this fit, I'm going to pedal off of this 11th fret on the third string. But that means I'm going to keep repeating that between all the other notes, and you kind of get this tonal sense of what's going on. Your ears can latch onto kind of a key that we're in. Um, so the phrase that I get by going back to that note there is this. It's a very melodic. That cycles around really nicely. So against those chords, you'll hear the two parts. You'll hear the low and the high. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, together. Cool. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you get those uh, two ends of the spectrum, the low, the high, yeah. the chuggy, the melody, it's all there. Now, the, the phrase that I've got there, it sounds catchy enough as it is, but typically in a Parkway song, the choruses are really big and catchy and in your face uh, and anthemic. So you get a really strong vocal melody, yeah. and this will be like a counter melody that sits along that. So you've got these two great parts that are singable, such good stick writing. in your head, such um, good writing. but we still got the chug at the same time. So such a good way of getting that kind of sing-along big sound and keeping the weight in there. Final section of the track. Yeah, so my, me there. doing my Luke Kilpatrick bit, and and that is basically the final section. Uh, it's kind of the the climax of the track. And what we wanted to do was use that very melodic section, but mm. change it very slightly and put in a, a new chord. Um, what we actually did was hit the low string. So going back to the initial motif. <laughs> The second time, this chord, okay, brilliant. So, by doing that, you save that low note, that B that we've all been waiting for, yeah, until the very last part of the song. We've got a melody that's going high, and yeah. lifting the track, yet we've got that low chuggy note coming right at the end. So um, it, it's got that variation, that variety to it, but it's got that weight still all the way yeah, through the track. Lots of kick drums. Yeah, it's totally. Which is a big thing for them. We start with that figure that we talked about before, because it's got that chorus progression again. So all of that phrase again, but to close off 
Jeff's got some fireworks in his playing as well. When he goes yes. from Leeds, he's got the techniques and uh, kind of really brings up ferocity to the playing at the right times. So to keep the energy up, and because I'm up at this part of the neck, um, I go through that figure again, and then I break into kind of a, using single string phrases, but picking my way through it uh, to get some, some pacing involved as well. So I'm going up to the 19th fret, and down to the 14th fret, and using the scale notes in between again. So... <laughs> using those notes, and my phrase is... And I drop that same idea over to the, what would be the high E string, but we're in drop B, yeah. so we've got a different uh, string going on here. Yeah. So my frets on this string are 14, 16, 17, and 19. And I play a very similar phrase, but using those notes. Then a variation on that, where I stretch all that to the 21st fret, and play... Instead. And then to follow those low chords when you drop yeah. down to the B, I've got this rising phrase. <laughs> Doubling up that low phrase. Yeah, cool. Should we right. do it together? Yeah. Chorus part, deafling lead part, yeah. down to the low B, ascend now. Wicked. Okay? Two, three, four. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed our humble interpretation of Parkway Drive. Um, take the ideas that you hear. I think that's been the main what we've our takeaway from this. Mm, yeah. So the things that we've taken, the things that caught our interests, we've brought phrases around what stood out from their approach to writing and playing. So do the same thing. Take what we've done. Put your own notes to it. Take the scales that we're using and build your own motifs and power chord sequences and things like that. Adjust the rhythms. So build your own tracks. Now you know the good stuff. Use it and make it your own. Be creative. <laughs>